Hello, hello you guys. Welcome back to Tuesday Tips with Dr. Vidal here at Pure Plastic Surgery. Tuesday Tips is when we meet every Tuesday afternoon to discuss different topics in plastic surgery and answer your questions. Today we will be talking about liposuction. What should I know about liposuction and why dedicate this time for liposuction and what should I know? Because I've seen that my patients and in general, people in general, even doctors and nurses think that liposuction is just a simple procedure that you can get in and out and you'll be just fine. It is a, a simple, it's not a simple procedure, it's a, still a surgery, okay? And that's why I wanted to discuss what to know about liposuction, what to expect, how to prepare, and that way when you go through it, you're not surprised, okay? It is still a, an elective surgery and it's tolerable. It is not, you know, we're not talking about heart surgery, transplant surgery, but it's still a surgery. It's not like getting a facial or getting a, a, a mani pe pedicure, you know? It is still surgery. So let's talk about it. And the first point, it is that, it is a surgery. So when we're thinking about liposuction, we think about small incisions and just a little cannula and sucking the fat and then I'm done. But the reality of it is that the extent of the surgery is basically your entire body. You were, we're, we're doing liposuction. When we're doing liposuction, usually we're doing the lipo 360, which involves liposuction to the abdomen, the flanks, the entire back. So the inflammation involves all of it, right? We are traumatizing and we are doing surgery in the entire torso, which involves inflammation of the entire torso, which means healing of your entire torso. So even though you are only seeing small incisions, you're still going through a lot of surgery, okay? Some people say, I don't understand. I did a breast lift and I feel so much better and I did a lipo 360 a year ago and I felt I was going to die. So the difference between these two procedures, even though the breast lift has a lot of incisions, it's localized to one area. So it's one area that your body needs to heal in comparison to liposuction, which involves, like I said, the entire torso. So that is one of the most important things to understand. And like I said, this is something that it's not only common to my patients, but doctors, nurses, people taking care of you, even the primary care when you go get your clearance, it's like, it's fine, you're only getting liposuction. No, we need to check your labs, we need to check your medical conditions, because like I will explain, it involves a lot. It involves a lot of healing that your body needs to tolerate. So number one, it is the surgery, so we need to prepare as it is, okay? Number two, and it's the most important part in liposuction and why, why it is so, um, why all the changes that you'll feel after the surgery are related to these two things, the fluid changes involved and the inflammation. What do I mean by fluid changes? So our body is, it's a, it's a combination of tissues, right? We have fat, we have blood, we have water, and the majority of our body is composed of water. And when we remove fat in two to three hours, I remove four liters of fat, people are like, I don't, I don't, I can't see, I can't understand what does that mean. Let's put it into perspective we have approximately five liters of blood in our entire body. So four liters of fat in our body is a lot. It's almost the same amount of blood that you have circulating in your body from head to toe. So removing four liters of fat from your body, it's a lot. Some people say like, why don't you remove more? Remove it all. Well, it has to do with this. So when you remove that amount of fat or tissue from your body, your body, it's working in a, in a balanced state. And when you remove all of that, all of a sudden you're removing that balanced state that your body used to run. And you're basically putting your body in a flight or fight response. All the inflammation, all the things in your body are trying to compensate your heart, your blood pressure, your brain, they're all like, what happened? We were like this, we are balanced, and now we are not. So 
the heart rate is going to go up trying to replace trying to get to the tissues the amount of blood it was given before because the fluid changes are going to go trying to optimize and trying to create that balance again and with that comes inflammation so inflammation is a response of the body you cut you get a cut inflammation or the inflammatory response of our body starts and that is our body's response to healing the inflammatory response involves a lot of cells and cytokines and proteins and stuff that our body throws to heal but with that healing the main one of the main things that it causes especially early on is one swelling two increase in heart rate and three increase in temperature all of those are responses of your body to inflammation think about it when you're sick when you have a virus and your body is trying to fight the virus what do you feel you feel hot your temperature increases your heart rate goes up trying to fight the infection and you sometimes get puffy all swollen all of those are signs of inflammation and all of those things you are going to experience after liposuction because it's basically putting your body in a 360 inflammatory reaction okay so those first few days after liposuction especially that first week it's normal for your heart rate to be high even it's like i'm drinking i'm staying hydrated and i still have a baseline heart rate of 110 115. yeah it is because your body is not only fighting the fluid changes but it's fighting the inflammation that we've created with a cannula going in and out all around your torso, trying to heal all of that, okay? The temperature, some people are like, I feel like I'm breaking a fever. I put the temperature, the, the, te the thermometer to measure it, and it's very low fever, or sometimes it's like, I don't have a fever, but I feel like I have a fever. Those are the, your body's response to inflammation. As long as you're not a consistent temperature, more than 101, it's normal. Low grade fever, early post-op one, twice, it's completely normal, okay? I always tell my patients, let us know. I like to know if you have a fever. I like to know what, what is that you're feeling. And that's why Clara is so good for communication in these things that are not an emergency, right? Are just things that are concerns, worry you. Just send us a message and we'll let you know, okay, this is good. Take the Tylenol and get back to us. It, it improved. It was just the changes of liposuction and we are okay, okay? Um, and the other thing is the blood pressure. So it's normal for your blood pressure to be all over the place. So it can be low because your fluid changes causing your dehydration and your hemoglobin is lower because you blood, you lost blood during the surgery. So your blood pressure may be low at first. So that is a sign of you need to be drinking more. You need to be helping your body replenish all that fluid or it can be high. Some people are like, after liposuction, my blood pressure is high. And that needs to do with the fluid changes. Your body is taking more fluid to the intravascular space, trying to bring more, more blood to the tissues. That means you're staying hydrated, that's good, but it's just your body's response. So, and, and you'll notice that you'll, you're going to be going to the bathroom to pee more often. And that means your body's mobilizing all that fluid, okay? And that means you're doing a good job with the hydration. Also, pain is gonna cause the blood pressure to go up, okay? So that's another reason why your blood pressure may be high initially post-op because you're in pain, you're sore all over, okay? And that's why you have your narcotic pain medications in case you need them, okay? So these two things explain most of the symptoms that you're gonna have. You may be weak, you may feel a little dizzy, you may feel a little lightheaded, especially when you're changing positions. It's just all of it a response of the fluid changes and the inflammatory response. Your body's gonna go through those first few days. How do you manage this? How do you feel better? One, and most importantly, hydration so when when i see my patients in pre-op and and most of the videos that i do you guys hear me talked about hydration how hydration one gallon or two gallons of fluid a day i cannot stress how important this is 
a lot of people ask me about IV fluids. Can I, can I get an IV infusion in the early post-op period? You can, it's not necessary, but you can. And a lot of people do it and a lot of people like it and feel better after it. It is an option, but you still need to drink the gallon of fluid a day. Why? The IV is gonna make you feel better for a short period of time because it's one liter going in and your body's gonna metabolize that and pee it very fast. So that IV is gonna work for a short period of time. Later on, a couple of hours later, you're gonna be in the exact same place you were before the IV if you don't continue with the oral replenishment of the gallon of fluid, okay? So the IV is good, but don't substitute the IV for the PO or the drinking the fluid because that is the important part, okay? Let's go to drainage. Why do we leak so much fluid after liposuction? It has to do with something called tumescence fluid, okay? Like I said, when we're doing liposuction, is through a small incision, I put a cannula in, and that's connected to a suction device, and that is sucking the fat, removing the fat from the subcutaneous space between the skin and the muscle, okay? To avoid blood loss, I need to infiltrate or put in fluid in that space with a medication called epinephrine that causes vasoconstriction. What, what is that? So the blood vessels shrink. So when I'm doing the liposuction, they don't bleed a lot, okay? They bleed a lot less. That allows me to do more liposuction and allows you to have a better recovery because the total blood loss is less. So when, when we started doing liposuctions in the 1950s, 1960s, they started doing liposuction without tumescin, and they noticed that they could do very small areas because once they started doing it, there was a lot of blood loss. So they needed to do very small, small areas at a time. When, this, when they started to, to infiltrate, they first started to infiltrate only saline, and they noticed hey, this is a lot better. And when you add epinephrine, the medication, it is a lot better. So how much better compared to, so if I remove one liter of fat, um, the ratio of blood loss without any tumescence is one to one. So it's one liter of blood loss. That is a lot. If you infiltrate with tumescence, the amount of tumescence that you infiltrate is depends on the ratio. If I infiltrate one to one, which is usually what I do, the amount that I infiltrate, I take out, that decreases the blood loss to a three to 4% of the blood loss, of the one liter. So we're talking about three to four between, before it was one liter of blood loss. So it's a lot different. And that is why I infiltrate that amount. It's like, why don't infiltrate less so I'm not leaking out the next day? Well, I need to infiltrate that amount because that is going to directly affect your blood loss. So even though I infiltrate first and then do the liposuction, you'd say, you suctioned it all, why am I still leaking? Well, some of it comes out with the liposuction, but the rest will leak out the next 24 hours because your body your tissues kind of absorb some and then start to leak, okay? So that is why you'll still be leaking 24, 48 hours after, okay? So don't be scared. It's completely normal to leak fluid after liposuction, especially those first few days. It can be messy, so prepare for it. Have some pads. The doggy pads are very good. Um, a lot of patients use um, the, the shower curtains to cover the mattress so it doesn't suck, the, like the mattress doesn't get all soaky. Um, towels, you know, prepare for it. You're, that This is going to happen and it's completely normal. Just prepare for it, especially, you know, in, for the mattress or sofa or, it, or, or, the, or the recliner that you're going to be staying in, okay? The other part, which is extremely important, is to know that that leakage tends to look very red. It's mixed up with your blood. So imagine if you get a if you get a glass of water and put one drop of dye in it, it all turns red, right? Same thing. Even though it's clear, it's mixed up with your blood. So when you, when you're leaking out, looks very red, and some people think they're bleeding out. No, it's not. It's just part of the process. Just let it be. 
and the drain will accumulate some, but the rest will be leaking from the incisions. Completely normal, okay? And this takes us to the next step, which is the massages. Massages are so important because they help to drain a lot of that fluid. If we don't get adequate drainage of that fluid, then we end up with seromas. What is a seroma? A seroma is a fluid buildup inside of the body, so in, in an area of liposuction, then, then we need to, um, to drain with a needle if it doesn't drain through the incisions. So that's why the massages early on are so important. Then the massages will help with swelling and also they will help with the scar formation to avoid fibrosis, avoid contrary irregularities, lumps and bumps, okay? So massages, I, I recommend starting the next day. You don't have to have one scheduled for the day of surgery. After the surgery, you rest. First massage is post-up day one. And for the first seven to 10 days out, you should be getting one daily. What, how many in total? It all depends. Everybody's different. But usually after a LIPO 360 BBL procedure, I recommend at least 20 massages, okay? Compression. Compression is going to help the drainage and the skin. So that's why I put it in between. Compression is extremely important. So we say that liposuction, the procedure itself, it's about half the work. The other half of your result is actually your post-op course. And it has to do with these two things. The massages and compression are so important that it will and it can affect your results dramatically. The compression should, for the first week, it should be a low compression garment. That's what we call a stage one. Why? I talked about fluid changes, inflammation, and traumatizing the skin, right, with the cannula. We need to give uh, the skin a breather. We need to give the, the skin time for the blood supply to improve before putting a tight compartment. Why? Because a tight garment too early can cause a lipoburn. Lipoburn is causing problems with the blood supply to the skin um, and it causes skin necrosis, scars, s -shars, and problems in the long run, okay? So the compression in the first week, low compression, after that initial swelling and the skin starts to heal, then we can go to a stage two or high compression garment to get that shape in, okay? And this is the skin quality, the last one that I'm gonna talk about, is the hardest one to predict, okay? Um, what are the things that, that we know uh, are good predictors of skin quality, which means that skin is gonna retract and you're not gonna have loose skin. What are the things that we know are good predictors? Age, okay? If you're a young patient and you haven't had pregnancies or weight changes, you usually were in a similar weight, so the skin hasn't been, anything that stretches, collapses, stretches, collapses the skin is gonna affect the skin quality, okay? So even if you're a young patient, but you went from 300 to 200 pounds to 250 to 150, that has caused the skin to stretch and collapse, stretch and collapse. So the ability of that skin to bounce back, it's affected, okay? but Age, I think, is the number one. Younger patients tend to behave better and to contract better. Older patients tend to have looser skin that doesn't contract as much, okay? And the other one is, like I said, changes or stretching. So pregnancy, weight loss, weight changes. Those two things are gonna affect dramatically. That I've seen, but sometimes people are like, but you did this patient and look at her skin, and look at her abdomen afterwards. She had a huge belly and now she's flat. I've seen them, yes. Is that the norm? No, it's not the norm, okay? The good thing is that for young patients, it can happen, but I'm always, especially in your pre-op appointment, I'm always gonna be honest with you and I'm gonna explain to you what are the possibilities, okay? How much of that skin contracts in the post-op period with the compression and the massages? Nobody knows, I don't know. I can only let you know with my experience, with what I've seen, what do I think will happen? But how much that skin ends up retracting, it's very individual, okay? Same thing the other way around. I've seen people that don't have a lot of loose skin, but when you empty it, 
the body doesn't contract at all and they end up with a little loose skin, okay? What things can we do about the skin quality or skin tightening procedures? We have Body Tight available. Body Tight is a device that works with radio frequency energy. You can combine it with your liposuction procedures or BBL procedure. Um, it is um, a device that it is good for one area, so that's why the price difference in different areas. If you want to add it for the abdomen, for the arms, for the chin. For the chin, because the device is smaller, it's called face tight instead of body tight, but the, the mechanism behind it, the energy behind it is the same. It's radio frequency energy. Okay, and those you can combine with liposuction and body type. And if you have more severe skin laxity, then I do recommend excisional procedures. What is that? If it's in the abdomen, a tummy tuck. If it's in the arms, a brachioplasty. If it's in the back, a back lift. Why? Because the if it's a lot of skin, that skin has already been stretched. It's sagging already. It's not going to retract. Remember that liposuction only takes care of removing the fat between the skin and the muscle. It does not cause the skin to redrape. It does not cause the skin to shrink. You know, the only thing liposuction does is a thickness of this turns it into a thickness of this. The rest is up to the post-op course and your skin quality and depending on your body type, okay? Let's take some questions. Okay, let's start yeah. with this. Can I smoke? THC cartridge pen? So THC, it's okay. Remember we do a um, urine toxicology um, and a nicotine test the day of your surgery, okay? The important thing about THC products is that if you smoke it, you have to be careful with the papers or where, where do you smoke it because sometimes those contain nicotine. If that is the case and you have nicotine positive, I will cancel your case because the skin, the risk of skin necrosis, fibrosis post-op is too high and it's not worth it. This is an elective procedure and we should be in the best shape possible to obtain the best results. What does Pure Plastic provide as post-op? Messages, fahas, training, words? Yeah, so depends on your quote, but in general, it will include the foams, the stage one faha, um, and intra-op, the cell saver for liposuction procedures, um, and the cosmetisure, which is an insurance that we use, I use, and Dr. Earl uses it, uses it as well for the patients, and it covers complications for the first 30 days after the surgery, okay? The cell saver, I didn't talk about that here, but it, it has to do with this part, the fluid changes. It helps a lot with the recovery, so I use it for all my liposuction and BBL patients. It's basically all the fluid that I remove, I pass it through this machine. That that machine, it, it works with difference in density and gets the part that that it has the red blood cells because the density is different and it puts them in a bag. And I give that back to you as an auto transfusion so the total blood loss is less. How do I know if I have fibrosis? I'm two weeks post-op. So two weeks post-op is too early. Fibrosis, you're gonna see it months after. So you can start to see it maybe in the first, at the three month mark with scar tissue, lumps, bumps but still at three months is very early and you can treat it. Yeah, but what you can start seeing it if you see it at three weeks, two weeks, at three months, two weeks is too early. That is not fibrosis. You're still very swollen. Just continue with your massages. Um, at three months, you can start to see how you're gonna see it hardening, hardening areas that are hard. The skin may be irregular. Um, so th those are the changes that you're gonna see with fibrosis. If you do see it, massages are the key, okay? At six weeks, you can start with, if you're developing any fibrosis, you can start with energy type of adjuncts to your massages, like cavitation, radio frequency energy, and those help break that tissue and smooth everything up. Can I do Lipo 360 with breast revision surgery together? It depends, okay? So um, the thing about the revision, it's, determining the extent of it okay rule of thumb the answer to that question if you need a, a revision if it's another breast lift then no 
If a revision is because you need to tighten everything up, then we need to redo your breast lift, then that is an extensive surgery of your breast. And that then limits the amount of liposuction that I can do to one liter, okay? If it's just a scar, if you have a little dog here, and I'm just removing a little bit of, of skin, then that doesn't count as a major surgery and we can do the four liter and a little scar revision. It all depends on what you consider revision. And if you do want an evaluation, go to our website or go to my Instagram virtual consultation form. There's going to ask you a few things, past medical history, what procedure are you interested in, etc. and send three pictures. You send that and one of our coordinators will give you a call once I evaluate everything and I give the recommendation. How to know if I need to gain weight for a BBL? So let's talk about that. A BBL, um, you, you all know that I have a, a, a limit of a BMI of max of 33.5 um, for any procedure because if we are higher BMI, the risk of complications increases. But what about in the low end? So especially for a BBL, we don't want to be too skinny because a BBL is basically removing fat from one area of the body to put it in another area to improve the contour volume projection. If I don't have fat, I can't give you projection. I can't give you hips. I can't give you an, an upside down heart shape. We need fat. So if you have, if you have a BMI less than 24, that is too thin you should gain weight for your procedure, for your BBL, okay? So it depends. Check, go on Google and put BMI calculator. That's gonna pop up a couple of pages. You can click one of those and it's gonna ask for your height and your weight. You put that there and it's gonna give you a number, okay? If you're between 24 and 33, we're good. Okay, how do you feel about pre-op vitamin products like Heal Fast that they say help you heal faster and better? Um, I'm not, I'm not sure what the, that specifically that you're asking the Heal Fest one, um, contains. It all depends on the contents of this products. Okay. So before surgery, I'm going to ask you to stop or all herbal and vitamin products. Why? Because the majority of those products actually increase risk of bleeding. Okay. So that is our reasoning. Uh, when we say you have to stop all herbals or supplements and only take vitamin C, iron, folic acid. Those are okay, but if you start taking others, um, it may increase the risk of bleeding. Um, so we have to check on, on, the, on the specific one that you asked me, what the components are, uh, and then we can let you know. Uh, the best thing is message through Clara. Okay, how soon after getting a tummy tuck can I get a LiPo 360? Yeah, um, if you're getting a tummy tuck, um, you can wait at least three to four months, everything healed, and we can have then a LiPo 360. If you are doing it the other way around, remember that liposuction causes actually more inflammation than a tummy tuck, we need to wait longer. So if you're having a LiPo 360 and then want to do a tummy tuck, we should wait at least nine months for everything to soften up, heal, so we can pull everything good and tighten. Do you suggest adding implants when you do breast lift or not? It depends. It depends on your goals. Um, so what, what are the main reasons to add implants when we're doing a breast lift? One is volume, okay? The implant, um, the mastopexy or breast lift is always going to decrease the size of your breast at least one cup size. Even if I don't remove any breast tissue, by just putting everything in a tighter compartment, which is your skin. I'm going to remove skin, tighten everything up and lift it. They're going to look smaller. Okay. So if you do want to either stay the same size or go a little bit bigger, then we need to put implants in. And the other reason is for the shape. When we do a breast lift at first, they're going to look very tight and perky, but with time, they're going to take the natural shape of the breast, which is a little bit flatter on top, rounder on the bottom. It doesn't mean that they're going to droop. They may droop with time, gravity, aging. The breasts are going to change and eventually they're going to droop. When, when I say this, it doesn't have... If you're seeing the breast on the side, this is an implant look. This is more of a natural shape of the breast. This fullness at top this slope is more natural and this is without implants okay 
with an implant, you're gonna have more fullness up here. And if that is the look that you want, then you will need an implant. Hi, doctor. I'm on weight loss pills. My surgery with you is on March 9th. Will you pop up on a drug test? Depends on what medication is, okay? So if you have a, if you have a surgery date already, messages through Clara and we'll let you know. But um, there is specifically one medication that is at, um, for use very commonly for weight loss. That is an amphetamine. If it's an amphetamine, you cannot have this because it will pop up in your drug test and it will interfere with general anesthesia. Hello, it's Evelyn. Hi. Do you have <laughs> the implants over or under the muscles? Hi, Evelyn. Um, I put, if I'm doing it um, with a breast lift, I put it under the muscle. If I'm doing a breast augmentation, it depends. If you have adequate breast tissue and thickness, I would put it under the fascia to try to avoid moving the muscle that has less pain for you. If you have a little bit of ptosis, which is a little bit of droopiness of your breast, um, a great one that you don't need to lift, but you're getting an augmentation, I might put it under the muscle to give you a little bit of a lift with it. What's your opinion about these new injections being marked as non-invasive liposuction? What's in the syringe? Do you do this procedure? procedure? Um, the one, I, I bet you're talking about Kybella. Kybella is a um, medication FDA approved for, uh, especially the treatment of, of the fat under the chin area. Um, basically dissolves the fat. Those are good for small areas like the shin and very small amounts of fat in that area. So what are my thoughts about it? If you have very little fat, and you don't want to undergo liposuction to the chin area, it is an alternative, but it, it is costly. It involves a couple of, it, of treatments. I, th I believe it's two to three injections. It causes a lot of inflammation. So you see a lot of swelling in this area after that injection. It is painful. It bruises and it causes a lot of scar tissue. So if you are thinking about liposuction in the long run, it will make the liposuction part harder. So if you're very scared of the, of the surgery, it is an option, but I'm a surgeon. If you ask me, I think liposuction gives better results. It is a very small incision hidden here. It's one deal and you can be more aggressive and empty all of that faster than with multiple injections of Kybella. Okay, you guys, I hope this helped out so you guys are very well prepared for liposuction. Um, let, I, I'm so glad. Thank you so much for sending me all those questions. I really enjoy answering your questions and getting, getting this interaction and getting to talk to you, all of you through, through this media. And uh, send me more topics so I can prepare another topic for next week. And I'll see you guys next week. Tuesday Tips with Dr. Vidal.